How to use WeatherTrack Mobile for controller installation and setup. Hello WeatherTrack listeners and thanks for joining me today for my WeatherTrack Mobile demonstration where we'll quickly examine the features that you need on WeatherTrack Mobile while you're performing the initial installation and programming of a controller. As always, step one is to confirm WeatherTrack access before you go out to the site. That is to say, make sure that WeatherTrack Mobile 3 is downloaded onto the smart device that you'll be using for your installation. Make sure that you know your WeatherTrack user account login and password. And make sure you've been given access to the controller you'll be programming while you're on site. So for step one, you put in your username and password for WeatherTrack Mobile 3 and log in using your smart device. The first thing you need to know when using WeatherTrack Mobile is some basic app navigation. To understand the basic structure of WeatherTrack Mobile, you need to understand that there's three main pages we'll work from. The Sites page, the Controllers page, and the Stations page. And then on every line that you see, there's two buttons. So there's a big button on the left and a small button on the right. To drill down from menu to menu, you'll use the small button on the right, and you'll use the large button on the left to access the features for that page. So if you wanted to look at all the cool features of the Sites page, I would hit the large button on the left, and that would take me to the features for the site. However, if I wanted to advance from the site page to the controllers page, I would hit the small button on the right, and that would drill down and take me to the controllers for the site that I selected. Again, if I wanted to access the features for the controllers page, I would hit the large button on the left. Or if I wanted to drill down to the stations for this controller, I would hit the small button on the right. And that would help me drill down and see the stations for this controller. And last but not least, if I want to access the map for this site, I push the mapping pin in the upper right hand corner and that will take me directly to the map. Now that you're familiar with the basic navigation of WeatherTrack Mobile, we want to discuss the first steps in programming by completing our controller settings. This lives on the controller page, so from the site page we select the small button on the right, and this takes us to our controllers page, and we want to look at the details for the controllers page. So we hit the settings page, or the large button on the left, and this will take us to our controller settings page, where we see all of our controller level commands. Now, across the navigation toolbar, we start on the alerts tab, but we want to look down here at the program tab. So we select program, and this will give us access to all of our controller level programming. For example, the first thing you see on this page is the type of controller you have, the version of firmware it's running, and the type of modem that's installed on that controller. As a rule of thumb, the first thing you'll do when powering up a controller is set the time and date using that controller panel. These are some of the only features that you can't access through WeatherTrack Mobile. And then make sure the controller is activated and online before doing any further programming. But once that's complete, you'll be able to complete most of the programming you do for an installation. So make sure you've got your time zone right and your max active station set to the number of stations you have plugged into the board. Runtime valve tests should always be on. And all of your settings from the setup menu should match the conditions in the field. Then we scroll down and we see the flow settings. This is what you'll program if you're adding a flow sensor during installation. So in this case, I go to my point of connection one and I select my point of connection one where I see all of the components of my point of connection. So if I have a master valve, I can choose either normally open or normally closed. I select to turn on the flow sensor and select what type of flow sensor that I have on this system. And if I have a pump, I select which station controls the pump start relay. Notice when I make a change that the apply button illuminates. Make sure to apply any changes that you make through the programming process. Once you've got all your flow set up, you can choose to either start the learn flow test from the weather track panel or continue on and do all of your station programming, which is what we'll do for our demonstration. So once all of your point of connection is all set up, then we scroll down here to our days and times and tell our controller when irrigation is allowed on this system, specifically what time irrigation should start, the duration of the available water window, and then if we scroll down to the bottom we see our water day mode where we can select what water days we have available. And as an installer, if you're not familiar with the local watering restrictions, it's best to program this controller with the start times and water windows from the controller that we're replacing. Once you've accurately programmed all of your controller settings, the next step is to program your station settings. To do this, we'll start at the sites page and we'll drill down to the controllers page, and then we'll drill down once again to the stations page. 
And as an installer, programming your station settings begins on the settings page for station one. So we'll click the big button on the left of station one, and that will take us to our settings page for station one. Once I'm on the settings page, the first thing that I do is set the timer for the manual irrigation test that I need for the programming process. So you set the default timer to the number of minutes that you need to program a station. Once your default timer is set, you'll hit start and irrigation will begin. That means we'll send the signal to the controller to turn on, and once irrigation is running out in the field, the first thing we do is name that station. We go to the station name and click on the station name, and then click in the box and fill out a station name. Remember to name this station in a way that will help any future users find this station running. Many people use cardinal directions or landmarks to help find those stations. Once you've entered a name, you'll hit OK, and then you'll scroll down here to the auto mode settings that station has. This is where you enter the specific settings that change station by station. So you'll document the sprinkler type, the plant type, the soil type, the sun exposure, and the slope for each station that the auto mode uses to create the ET-based schedule. Remember to apply any changes that you make to this station setting so it's saved into the program. Once you've completed this programming, for extra credit, you'll come up to this orange button on top and hit the button called Place. This will place a station location pin in your map to identify where this station runs in the field. And you can see here, if I zoom in, we can place that station location pin by placing our finger on the pin and dragging and dropping it into the correct location. Once that's complete, we hit the check mark and verify that the location is correct. After verification, We'll be able to use our phone's camera to take pictures of the running station, as well as leave any notes that we have about the station that we see in the field. We also need to identify which station we see running in the field and assign that to the program. Once you've completed putting all of the information in you want for this station, you'll hit save to add this pin to the map. After that, we hit the back arrow in the upper left hand corner, and that will take us back to our station program. Notice that the word on our station location pin has changed from place to view. So if you ever want to find that station location in the map, all you have to hit is view, and that will take you directly to that station location in the map. Once you've completed programming this station and placing the station location pin, we'll come up here to the top and advance to the next station by using the advance arrow, and that will take us to station two, where we'll start the process over again and repeat the process until we've programmed every station on our controller. Then, once you've completed programming each station on the controller, the final step for an installer is to mark the key management components of the irrigation system into the weather track map. To do this, we want to go to the weather track map, so we'll hit the mapping pin in the upper right hand corner of the display. One of the most essential things about the map is this little blue pin right here, which uses the GPS signal in your device to mark your physical location on site. So when I go to add a pin, I hit this plus button or add that will drop a pin in that map directly on that blue dot. So the concept is you can drop a pin in the exact location that you're standing. And the first thing I do is select what type of asset I'd like to add to the map. And maybe you're marking a backflow preventer or a rain sensor. The first thing we do is select the correct type of asset. And the mobile mapping tool will drop that asset directly in your physical location or where it sees you on the map. Then we zoom in and we make any minor corrections to that physical location by touching the asset and you'll see it pop up above your thumb and then you'll be able to drag that asset right to the proper point in the map where it looks right to your eye. Once the location is correct in the map, then we will press the check mark to confirm the asset location. And again, we'll take a photo of that asset using the camera on our smart device. In fact, I recommend taking two photos of the asset, one up close so we can see the details of the asset itself and one from a few steps back so we can see the asset in its surrounding or natural location. Then we'll select which controller or station we want to assign this asset to, and then fill out any information that's easy for us to define about this asset. For example, the manufacturer, the model, or serial number of that asset that might be valuable to anyone in the future who's managing the system. After we've completed filling out any or all of this information, we hit the save button and that will save that asset into this map. 
and using this mapping feature will give us a resource to know all of the locations of all of the master valves, flow sensors, and other key management components of the irrigation system on site. So anyone using the WeatherTrack system in the future can walk right to it. Thank you for joining me for this WeatherTrack mobile demonstration where we looked at the tools that you'll use during installation and setup. Hopefully this makes your next installation a breeze.